Here's one I'd like to share with you. I just finished a data collection, the automatic data reduction did its job, and I've set everything up for all X2 and I loaded the file. And it's 0.8 in copper, it's great, and completeness 93%, that's really good news. I'm going to solve this, and I'm running shell XT here, and I should expect a solution in Peter one upon C, and that's exactly what it finds and the solution pops up. I'm going to refine this a couple of times, uh, make it anisotropic, and refine it some more, and that looks all pretty good. This is of course some sort of disordered thing that's going on here, so let's deal with this for the moment. I expect it looks very much like the MS. Oh, I select one and type unique, and uh, there we go. I'm going to delete this, and I am going to make this a sulfur, name S. Now let's have a quick look at the distances. This looks shortest, that's 1.3, 1, 1 yep, that is the oxygen, name O. And refine this just one time, and I adjust it again. Okay, so this needs to be turned around on itself. So the tool I'm going to use is actually um, mode. Uh, fit minus S and same. And I need to have a selection to do this. So I hide the Q peaks, select all of this, and now issue the command. And now switch the Q peaks back on. I'm just going to turn this around on itself until this looks uh, roughly in the right place. And I think maybe with the shift key we can move it a little bit over. And that's it. So control R. And that looks rather good. Um, make it anisotropic, refine it, and um, let's double click on not all of them. Control Q, put a Rigo on that, Rigo, and a Rigo on the other one. Okay, let's see what happens. That looks acceptable. Well, this is not quite ideal, but let's uh, not focus on this. Um, H add. Add the hydrogens to this, and lo and behold, this now looks fairly um, acceptable. The problem with that structure is we are looking at an R factor of 18%. The goodness of fit, of course, hasn't been adjusted, and the weighting scheme hasn't been adjusted, so we need to check the auto box here and refine this so it'll drop a little bit, um, but not very much. There's still something moving. Where's the movement in those hydrogens here? We can click on that to see. Yep, it's those hydrogens. Refine. Let's make it 20 cycles and um, hopefully this will nail it. Okay, 18%. Not great for something that looks actually very good. Let's switch those Q peaks on. There are quite a lot of Q peaks and they're not on the bonds or anywhere. So the first thing you check is, is it maybe in the um, bad reflections in here? There's nothing bad in here. So this is very odd. So. <clears throat> One of the things to do is run Platon. So you click the Platon button, and this is a normal end of Platon. What we haven't done, we haven't got a SIF file, so we need to switch the actor on, and we also need to make sure we've got a list for uh, command in there. And why did this not work? Forward slash list for uh, because it's probably already in there. So refine that, and. Um, now Platon should run normally, and we can run twin rod mud. And lo and behold, we find there is a twin law. And what's more, it's non-integral, 1, 0, 0 0.19, 0 minus 1, 0, 0, 0 minus 1. So there's some twinning going on in one of the directions. In Platon, we can actually generate a twinning file. So I select this uh, matrix 1 and click HKLF5 generate and this has made me a new set of files that I can use to refine as HKLF5. Let's get this legend off the way, shift and left mouse and move it out of the way. First of all, <clears throat> let's have a quick look at the statistics because it really is twinning. Then we should see this in the FOPSF calc plot and we see very well how almost all reflections are above. So the f opses are always slightly higher than the f calcs, And that basically means there's always a contribution of another twin component that overlays these reflections. Right, 
So let's try see what Platon generated. So we're opening the Platon files. Um, they should be the latest. F5 just to refresh. Where are they? Here we are. Twinning. So it's these two files. So we're opening this twinning.in. So we just drag it in. And um, we also need to make sure we actually select the twinned uh, HKL5 file HKL. So it doesn't say HKL5, but that's what it is. It's HKL5. We put in a BSF of 0.33. And if we refine this, let's see what we get. Um, we are getting 13%. So it's lowered the R factor quite significantly with this almost artificially generated HKL5 format file. So what we should do now is go back to Chrysalis Pro and see whether we can actually solve this twinning or deal with this twinning in uh, in the data reduction, which is clearly what we should be doing. And what we do, we click on this button here and look at twinning multicrystals. Um, somebody told me you have to go current UB to twin and uh, click OK. Then you click on, um, that's the wrong one, click on twin unit cell finding with options. And we basically say we want identical lattice. We think it's a real twin and not just two different materials. And we click OK and let it do its job. And it does find a twin component here with uh, certain separate peaks and overlap peaks. And we can visualize them in the Evolt Explorer. And if you look along the axis A star, B star, so here you can really clearly see the twin law where these two axes are slightly offset at a slight angle and there's nothing along C, nothing along an A, but it's just all along B. Okay, so we've done that. We now need to go save information, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, and we close this. Now we need to go start, stop, and data reduction with options. Since we've run the twinning, we now have more options here. We've got twin component one, component two, and we can click next and we can click next. Um, I'm not clear about what you should be doing here, whether you should skip the model refinement or whether you should keep it. Um, I'm going to keep it as it is at the moment, edit special parameters. Um, I think this is a useful one when reflections are very close because that's what we've got. We could play with rejection of reflections. We could also make the um, integration mask size a little bit smaller. Um, I think I'm going to do this here. So we're just going to, to um, 0.75 here. And I suspect follow the profile side changes with incidence angle is a useful one as well. Okay, and um, we click next and yep, that's all fine. We click next and next. And I think we'd have to do nothing with the name. It'll generate its own names and we go finish. Now this will take a little while. Um, so I will pause the recording and get back to you when it's done. So it's just finished and it popped up this uh, space group determination window. I left it to manual because um, if anything changes in all this processing, you, you kind of want to know. And I think that's the best way to find out this monoclinic. That's P, uh, centrosymmetric, that's all fine. And we are still in P21 upon C because sometimes it changes the um, space group or the setting. And, and then, of course, you end up with an incompatible set of files. So uh, we apply all this, so that's all fine. And we're going to finish that. And um, the next thing we need to do is the sort of twin finalization. Um, I'm not entirely sure that it actually writes the twinning files as they are, although we have to do this. Let's just um, verify this. So I'm going back to Olix 2. I made this little tool, which I call Rod. It's just a tool that sort of shows me what's in that struct folder. And so nothing's appeared there yet. So I suspect we need to do a twin finalization. I don't really want to go into the detail of the settings. I know there's a lot you can do, but for the moment, let's just go for default, except on the screen, I can't actually do this. So I hope that the, um, I, I can't move it up. This is not what I do. I, I don't know what to do. So I just hope that the, um, yeah, that this button down there is the okay button and it's active. Let's see what happens. And, um, Let's get back to Olix 2 and refresh this. And no files have appeared here. Peter 1 upon C. Well, they shouldn't have been because this hasn't actually finished yet. And um, 
let's get this finished. Oh, ready. And I think there's still no files here, and this is something I've got a bit of an issue with because I don't quite understand why it doesn't put the files in here. I'm probably doing something wrong, so I hope that some of uh, you experts can tell me what's going on. So I'm going up and there's nothing here, and I'm going up one more and have a look what's there. And uh, let's just have a look in this champ folder, and there's nothing there either. So nothing's really changed, and I don't quite know what the philosophy is here. So if I modify this, here let's just go one up so maybe it's in the top directory it's got to be somewhere <laughs> um right today is the 11th oh hey so there's a whole lot of files that have appeared and all to do with twinning and they wrote about the right timestamp so in the absence of knowing what to do i'm just going to take everything with this timestamp um copy it open the folder where we are in the struct folder and have a new subfolder which I'm just going to call twin and I put everything in here. Right, so this little tool now, if I refresh this, this should show me this and I have this uh, twin here. So what, I, what I'm doing now, I'm just copy everything that's in this twin folder into the current folder which is the one, this is this Olex2 folder and this just copies all of it in regardless of what it is and if I now go back to work I can select various files I've got here and what I want to select is the hklf5 file which is the one it, it, it made now if I do this I also need to edit this up here and uh, we, I don't need to edit it because I, the last file I had was refining against the twin data set so what I really should be doing I should be opening the structure that wasn't the um, structure that was generated by um, uh, Platon but actually open the real ins file which is what we've got here. Um, we've got conflicts here so this is quite useful to know that there are conflicts in this case I really don't care about this and we um, need to edit that ins file to make it hklf and put a BSF and it was around about 0 0.3 in here and now we need to select the correct file which is the HKLF5 and if this experiment has worked then this should refine and hopefully um, give us a slightly better structure than we had before and um, yes it has 7.17 percent so I think this is a nice little demo of showing how you have a twinning problem, you don't really notice it until the R factor just gets stuck, even though everything else looks fine. Platon and HKLF5 generated in Platon gets you somewhat along the way, but a very simple default twin, refine, uh, twin data uh, reduction in Chrysalis Pro actually gets you a structure that's entirely publishable and um, with very little pain and very little you know, knowing what you actually do. I wish there was a bit more transparency in where the files go and, and maybe just putting them all into that um, struct folder. I think that would be really useful. Other than that, um, I think that's it for the moment. Thank you for using Olix 2.